Okay, so this is going to be notes on graphing quadratics in standard form. Uh, up until this point, we've been able to graph quadratics through vertex form and factor form. This summer, though, we're going to go ahead and graph it from standard form, which if you remember, it's that y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, which is written right here. Okay, so if a quadratic is written in standard form, you can quickly determine the vertex, the concavity, and the y-intercept. We're going to show you how to do that today. All right, so let's see. It says vertex from standard form, given y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, the vertex can be found at, and this is the formula that we learned right before we went to break. The formula is negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a. And if you remember, um, that looks a little complicated, but the application of it is really not that bad. You're going to need three highlighters for today's notes. First highlighter is going to go here. I want to find the vertex from standard form. I'm going to use this formula right here. All right, so that takes care of the first one. Second part says y-intercept. The y-intercept can be found by, and the way we're going to be finding it is substituting x equal to 0. So all we're going to have to do is substitute x equal to 0 into our equation. And we should be able to find where that y-intercept uh, occurs. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is the a value. Sorry, I forgot to highlight. To get the y-intercept, you need to substitute x equals 0. And then finally, um, the a value. The a value is going to determine whether this thing is concave up or concave down. Uh, during the quiz, a lot of students were asking me, what does that mean? We've been talking about this for a long time. Concave up means that you have a graph that's pointing upwards. Concave down means you have a graph that's pointing downwards. Okay, so that's what that means. A value is going to determine if it's concave up or down, and, and it's also going to determine whether you have a vertical stretch or compression. We've talked about that before, but really, really lightly. Um, we're going to make a little bit of a bigger deal of it today. Uh, so what I want you to do, this is the way your notes are going to look like. So at the end of the day, your notes is going to be one page long, okay? Um, I need you to go ahead and copy down that graph. Try to make it really clean and copy it down exactly the way I have it. Uh, we're going to be using it twice. So make sure that it's a good, clean looking graph. So I'm going to graph y equal to 2x squared plus 8x plus 2. In order for me to graph this, we're going to have three different points that I need you to really focus in on. Okay. The first point is probably the most important one is going to be the vertex. So I want to graph y equal to 2x squared plus 8x plus 2. In order for me to graph this, I need the vertex. And the vertex, I'm going to be using that formula, negative b over 2a, f of negative b over 2a. Before I even do that, though, I'm going to go ahead and write down what my a, b, and c are. My a is equal to 2 because that's the number in front of the x squared. My b is equal to 8 because that's the number in front of the x. And my c is equal to 2 because that's the number that doesn't have an x associated to it. Okay, so I know a is 2, b is 8, c is 2. Now that I know my values a, b, and c, I'm going to find the vertex. According to the notes that we just took above, in order to find the vertex, I need to get negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a. So this is how I find my vertex. I'm going to focus on the first part of the vertex, which is my x value. Okay, so I'm going to find that negative b over 2a. According to um, my values, negative b, that would be negative parentheses. My b is 8, so I'm going to write negative 8 over 2 times a. My a is 2, so I'm going to write 2 times 2. That is negative 8 over 4, which is just negative 2. What I found was the x value of my vertex. The first part of my vertex is going to be negative 2. Now I need to find the second part of my vertex. The second part of my vertex is right here. It's f of negative b over 2a. Now that looks really complicated, but that's just saying you need to take negative 2 and plug it into your function. So that's like saying f of negative 2. I need to take that negative 2 and plug it into my function, which is right here. That means anywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with negative 2. So I'm going to put a negative 2 right here in place of that x. And I'm going to put a negative 2 right here in place of that x. So I'm going to write y equals 2 times negative 2 squared, because I substituted the negative 2 here, plus 
8 times negative 2, because I substituted the negative 2 here, plus 2. Now, I notice that uh, students have been having a lot of trouble uh, calculating this first part. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at that first term and see how you calculate it. We're going to use PENDAS, uh, which means I'm going to go ahead and start with parentheses uh, and say, is there anything for me to do inside the parentheses? Inside the parentheses, I just see a negative 2. There's nothing for me to do inside the parentheses, so the parentheses are done. So the next thing I look for is exponents. I do see an exponent, which is right here. That is negative 2 to the second power. That means negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. So this turns into a positive 4, and we're going to multiply that by this 2. 2 times 4, that gives me a total value of 8. So I write y equals 8. Uh, 8 times negative 2, that's going to give me a negative 16, and then bring down the plus 2. 8 minus 16 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. So I got my y value of negative 6. Now, what did I just find? I found the second part of my vertex, which is negative 6. The first part of my vertex was negative 2. The second part of my vertex is negative 6. That means my vertex must be at the coordinate negative 2 comma negative 6. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight that in green because I know what my vertex is. That's the first point that I need to graph on my graph. So I'm going to go over here at negative 2, negative 6, and place a dot right where it belongs. This is my vertex at negative 2, comma, negative 6. OK. Um, now that I have my vertex, it's always, always really important for me to draw my line of symmetry through my vertex. So here's my line of symmetry. I know that this graph, whatever it is, is going to pass right through that vertex. There's my line of symmetry. If I want to know what the actual equation is for my line of symmetry, I'm going to write x equals negative 2 is the equation for that line. So it's going to be reflected around that line. All right, so I got the first part. I got my vertex down. That's the first thing that we need to focus on. Now I'm going to focus on the yellow thing, which is the y-intercept. Um, they said, in order for me to find my y-intercept, y-intercept, I'm going to substitute x equals 0. That's what it says according to the notes above. Um, really, really ap ap easy application. What that means is I'm going to substitute x equal to 0 into my function. So here's my equation right here. And I'm going to plug in 0 in for my x. So it's going to go here and it's going to go here. So let me go ahead and write that down. That's going to be y equal to 2 times there's an x, so I'm going to replace it with 0, plus 8 times there's an x, so I'm going to replace it with 0, and then a plus 2. And just like before, um, I'm going to do exponents first. So I get 0 squared. That's 0. 2 times 0 is 0. So this is y equal to 0 plus 8 times 0. That's 0 plus 2. So essentially, guys, what ends up happening is this goes away because it's 0. This goes away because it's 0. And you're just left with that 2. So I know that y equals to 2 is my um, y-intercept. Essentially, what I'm saying is I plugged in a 0. What popped out was a 2. When I put in 0, the answer I got was 2. This is going to be written as a coordinate. The y-intercept must be at the coordinate 0, comma 2. When you plug in a 0, the answer you get is 2. Therefore, my y-intercept must be at 0, comma 2. I'm going to put a dot at 0, comma 2. And that takes care of that. So there's my second dot that I said you need to be uh, taken care of. Uh, but I remember I said that I needed three dots. The third dot is really easy um, just because I know that uh, I have my line of symmetry. Then since this is two dots away from my line of symmetry, then I should have a similar dot on the other side being mirrored or reflected over. And now with those three dots, that is enough to go ahead and sketch this graph. I know that my graph is going to look something like this. For the homework, um, that's all you really need to do. Just those three dots, the vertex and the y-intercept, and then mirror it over. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and erase that for right now. 
And the reason is because I'm gonna go ahead and make a little bit more of an adjustment on my um, on my A value. Let's go ahead and talk about my A value. My A value, again, another really, really easy thing. My A value is basically the number that I got for A. And if I look above, I already did that, right? I said that A was two. So I'm gonna say A equals two, there's my A value. My A value is two. Now, what is that telling me? Because my A is two, it's positive. Because it's positive, then I know it's concave up. And that's exactly what I have here. So that's no uh, surprise for me. The other thing is I know that two is bigger than one. So this is actually gonna vertically stretch. This is a question that uh, students have been asking me and I've just kind of been uh, you know, holding off on it, but I'm gonna show you exactly how it stretches today. Let's, in order for us to do this, let me go ahead and um, give you a little bit of a side note. So remember that uh, in order for me to graph my parent graph, um, I got points, right? For a regular y equal to x squared, I need to know how to plot the dots. The coordinates were zero, zero. And then the next dot was one, one. And the next dot was two, four. And the next dot was three, nine. I said, you gotta memorize how to come up with those dots. And basically because it's a quadratic, it's y equal to x squared, we're just squaring all the numbers. When I take one and I square it, one times one is one. When I take two and I square it, two times two is four. When I take three and I square it, three times three is nine. That means the next one, when I take four and I square it, four times four is 16. That's how we got and generated those numbers. Now, normally, if I knew where the vertex was at, I'd say, oh, take your zero, zero, check. The next one is gonna be one, one. So you're gonna go right one, up one and put a dot. The next one is gonna be two, four. So from your vertex, you're gonna go right two, up four, and then put a dot. Except that's not what's happening here. You see right here, I said right two, up four, put a dot but that's not where my dot is. My dot is up here. So then the question becomes, how come the dot went all the way up there? The reason why is because there's a vertical stretch of a factor of two. What that means is we are gonna take all of these Y values and they're not gonna be normal Y values. They're gonna get multiplied by a factor of two. That means when I take that zero and multiply it by two, it's still zero. Then nothing really happens there. But when I take the one and I multiply it by two, now I'm at the point one comma two. That means from my vertex, I should go right one, up two, one, two, and put a dot. Notice that it's not at one, one anymore. It's at one, two because that thing got stretched by a factor of two. Let's take a look at the next one. I think the next one is where it really starts hitting home. This four is not gonna be a regular four because this has an A value of two, it's gonna stretch by a factor of two. So when I take four and multiply it by two, I'm gonna get eight. That means I need to go right two up eight from my vertex, right two up eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And look at that, it landed exactly where I thought it was gonna land because of this vertical stretch, okay? Um, the next one, if I were to do that, it would be three comma nine, but again, nine is not gonna work because I got a vertical stretch, my A value is two. So I'm gonna take that nine, multiply it by two, that's gonna be 18. I would go right three, up 18, and obviously that's not gonna fit on my graph, okay? But um, I can mirror this dot over here on the left-hand side. So let me go ahead and do that. Uh, that was the wrong color. Let me just try that again. And now you can see your graph looks like this. Notice that your graph is skinnier than what you're probably used to. And that's because of this A factor of two stretching this thing out. Okay, so now you know how this is actually uh, getting stretched out. All right, um, let me go ahead and erase some of these little markings here. All right, I'll, I'll leave it like that uh, for now. I say I'm gonna leave it like that and I, I can't, like that's just part of me, I just need to fix it. All right, let's do the next one. So there's my first graph, I'm good with that. Let's graph the next one. I got y equal to negative three x squared plus six x plus five. We're gonna do the exact same thing. I need to get my three dots, okay, so let's see. First thing I wanna do is I wanna find my vertex. If I wanna find my vertex, I need my A, B, and C. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I need my A, B, and C. My A is negative three, my B is six, and my C is five. 
If I want to find the vertex, I need to use the formula negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a. Okay. Uh, so I hope oh, that is my vertex. So let me go ahead and highlight that in green. I'm only going to worry about the first part first, which means I'm going to worry about that negative B over 2A first. So let's see, negative B over 2A. If I start uh, plugging in my values, that's negative parentheses. My B is 6 over 2 times A. My A is negative 3. That's going to be negative 6 divided by negative 6, and that gives me a positive 1. So I know that the first part of my vertex, my x value, is going to be 1. What am I going to do with that one? Well, the second part of the vertex says take the 1 and plug it into your function, which here's my function. I'm going to take my 1, and I'm going to plug it into all my x's. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to replace it with the number 1. So I get to write y equals negative 3. There's an x. I'm going to replace it with the number 1 squared, plus 6 times, there's an x, I'm going to replace it with the 1, plus 5. I get y equals negative 3 times 1 squared. Again, I'm going to do this part first. 1 times 1 is 1. And now you're left with a negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3, plus 6 times 1 is 6, plus 5. That gives me uh, negative 3 plus 6 is 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. The second part of my vertex is 8. So since the first part of my vertex is 1 and the second part of my vertex is 8, I get to write that the vertex is at the coordinate 1, 8. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight that in green so I know where my vertex is at. I'm going to go ahead and plot this on this graph here, but I'm going to do it in a different color so it stands out. 1, 8 should be right here. All right, there is my coordinate 1, 8. That is my vertex. Uh, because my vertex is going through 1, 8, I know that my line of symmetry is going to go right through there. And for a line of symmetry, you always have to write it as an equation, which has starts off with an x equals, and in this case, my x value is equal to 1. So the line of symmetry is the equation x equal to 1. My vertex is at 1, 8. Um, I just need a couple of more points, and I should, I should be good to go. Uh, so the other point I'm going to focus on is the y-intercept. The y-intercept, according to the notes, I can find the y-intercept by substituting x equals 0. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that in yellow. To find your y-intercept, you substitute x is equal to 0. So let me go ahead and do that. That means anywhere on my function where I see an x, I'm going to replace it with the number 0. And I think some of you guys are probably are figuring this out. So let me go ahead and write this. y is equal to negative 3 times 0 squared plus 6 times 0 plus 5. And what I'm saying is some of you guys are figuring out like, hey, this is just going to turn to 0. That's gone. This is going to turn to 0. That's gone. It's always going to be this last number because these two turn into zeros. And so they, they basically disappear, and you're just left with that last number. So I'm going to write that y, when I substitute 0, is equal to 5. When I plugged in a 0, the answer I got was 5. So you need to write this as a coordinate. The y-intercept must be at 0, 5. So I'm going to go ahead and plot 0, 5 on my graph. 0, 5 occurs right here. There's my second dot that I told you I need to generate. And because it gets reflected over, then um, I can flip it or mirror it over to the other side. And those are the three dots that you need for your graph on um, the formative. I'm not too really interested in the other points, but I can go ahead and generate them if you like. Your graph is going to look like that, and that should be enough to get you through the formative. I'm going to be a little bit more uh, specific and talk about my A value. I know that my a value, according to what I did earlier, was negative 3. Let me go ahead and write that a little bit better. a value is equal to negative 3. I'm going to write that in pink. How did I know that? Well, because I said that earlier, right? I know my a is negative 3. What is that telling me? Because it's negative, 
this graph is going to be concave down, or I can say that this is going to get flipped. The other thing I know is that all my y values, you see all these y values over here? They're going to get stretched by a factor of negative 3. So when I multiply these at y values by negative 3, this still turns into 0. But when I take this y value and multiply it by negative 3, what I get is negative 3. So this is telling me I need to go right 1, down 3. So if I look at my dot, here's my vertex. I'm going to go right 1, here it is, and then down 3. 1, 2, 3. And it lands exactly where I knew it was going to land because it's getting stretched out. Um, let's do the next one. This next one, it's normally at 2 comma 4, but that 4 is going to get multiplied by a value of negative 3. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. That means this next dot from my vertex, I need to go right 2, down 12. Right 2, 1, 2, and then down 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. My dot should be way the heck down here. And if I mirror that over, it just so happens to land also on the, on the other blue graph. But now I know my graph is looking like this. Look how skinny and long this thing is. And that makes sense because I know that I have that vertical stretch by a factor of three. It's not as short and uh, pretty you looking like the other ones usually are, okay? All right, um, those are all the notes I have for today. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.